Hello, today we are going to talk about fractions, how to convert, compare, and order fractions. First, I want to start with a topic that we should be very familiar with, and that's decimals. Since decimals and fractions are both examples of rational numbers, it's safe to say that you can change or convert a decimal to a fraction. And here are the steps. First, you're going to identify the ending place value in your decimal. So in this case, the decimal ends in the hundredths place. This hundredths is going to become the denominator in my fraction. So since it ends in the hundredths, 100 is my denominator. Step two, identify the number in front of the decimal point. This becomes the whole number in the mixed number. So in other words, if there happens to be a whole number in front of the decimal point, like in this case there's a 2, that means the 2 is now the whole number and you're going to have a mixed number. If there wasn't a number there, then you would just have a proper fraction. Number 3, identify the number that is behind the decimal point. That number in this particular example is 35. This is the number that will become the numerator. So what we have is 2 and 35 over 100, which leads me to step 4, reduce. Reduce simply means to think of a number that goes into the numerator and also in the denominator. The only number that I can think of is 5. So I'm going to reduce my numerator by 5, that would be 7, and I'm going to reduce my denominator by 5, that would be 20. You just simply keep the whole number, in this case it's 2, making your answer 2 and 7 20th. Now, we're going to talk about how to change a fraction to a decimal. So now we're going backwards. Step 1 is to identify the whole number if you have a mixed number. Again, if you just have a proper fraction, you just won't do this step. But in this particular example, we have a mixed number, and the whole number is a 4. This goes in front of your decimal point. So I'm just going to come down here and draw my decimal point and put that 4. Step 2 is to do your numerator divided by your denominator. In this particular example, the numerator is a 3, and I'm going to divide that by the denominator of a 5. Obviously, 5 can't go into 3, but that decimal point that's behind the 3, we've learned you move it straight up, add a 0, and now we can divide. 5 goes into 30, 6 times, 6 times 5 is 30, I'm left with nothing, therefore the decimal is 0 0.6. And step 2 continues by saying this goes behind the decimal point. So we already have our decimal point here, so we're just going to copy the 6. So 4 and 2, I'm sorry, 4 and 3 fifths converts to 4.6. So, how to change an improper fraction to a mixed number? Well, there's only one step when you're going from improper to mixed, and that is to do your numerator divided by your denominator. So kind of like what we just saw, except this time we're going from improper to mixed. So you start off by doing numerator divided by the denominator. 5 can go into 12 two times. 2 times 5 is 10 you're left with 2. However, we are changing this improper fraction to a mixed number. So instead of continuing the division, this is where you stop. We have figured out that 5 goes into 12 two whole times. So whatever you get up here is going to be your whole number in your answer. So again, that was 2. What's left over is going to be the numerator. And what we were dividing by is your denominator. So 12 over 5 converts to 2 and 2 fifths. All right, now how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. So again, we're going backwards. We have a mixed number, 5 and 2 thirds, and we want to change that to an improper fraction. This one's a little longer, but it should move a little quicker. You have the denominator, and you're going to multiply it by the whole number that is in your mixed number. So in this case, we're going to start off by doing the denominator of 3 times 5 
that's going to be 15. Step two is to take the product from step one. In this case, it was 15. And we are going to add to that 15 what the numerator is. And the numerator in this case is two. So that's 17. Step number three says this total is your new numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and put 17 on top. Step four, keep the same denominator. Originally it was three, so we're just going to copy it and we're done. So five and two thirds converted to 17 thirds. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is equivalent fractions. Well, first of all, what they are are fractions that can be represented by the same value or the same amount of space. So I took some time to draw two models, one model for one half and another one for two fourths. Even though they have different numerators and different denominators, they both can be represented by the same shape. Therefore, two sorry, two-fourths and one-half are what we consider equivalent fractions. Now, it won't always be this easy, so how can you check if two fractions are equivalent? You're going to use something called cross products. So in other words, you're going to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply this denominator and this numerator. And if you notice, they are kind of diagonal or across from each other. That's why we call them cross products. So four times one is 4. Then I'm going to come the other way and do 2 times 2, which is also 4. 4 does equal 4, therefore that is how you would prove that 1 half and 2 fourths are equivalent fractions. Their cross products are the same. So if their cross products were different, then it would be safe to say that they would not be equivalent fractions. All right, comparing and ordering fractions. So step number one, when you have a group of fractions or two and you're asked to figure out which is the larger or put them in order from least to greatest, the first thing you're going to do is find your LCD. And that's also called the least common denominator. It's kind of like a least common multiple, but you're just focusing on the denominators. So what we have is 3, 4, 6, and 12. So what we need to do is recall from unit two how to find the least common multiple. We have three, four, six, and 12. We could do tree diagrams and use prime factorization, or we could just simply look at our numbers, a three, a four, a six, and a 12, and think about all their multiples. If we list out the multiples of three, that would be three, six, nine, and 12, so forth and so on. Four would be four, eight, 12, 16, so forth and so on. Six would be six, 12, 18, 24, so forth and so on. And 12, well that would be 12, 24, 36, so forth and so on. And if you look at all four lists, the number 12 appears on all of them. Therefore, 12 is our LCD. So instead of writing 3, 4, 6, and 12, I'm now going to rewrite this 12, 12, 12, and keep this one at a 12. Number 2, or step 2. Find the equivalent fractions, or in other words, you're going to rename the numerator. The numerator, I'm sorry, the denominator in the first fraction was a 3, but now it's a 12. Clearly, we multiply 3 by 4 to get 12. So 2 by 4 is going to be 8. It was 4 here, and then it changed to 12 by simply multiplying by 3. Therefore, 3 times 3 is 9. It was 6, again, now it's dropped to 12 by multiplying by 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. It was 12, and it stayed at 12, so that means the numerator here will also stay. Then step number 3, you are going to compare or order, depending on the problem. In this case, we're ordering because we have more than 2. 
the new numerators. So since the denominators are all the same, we're just going to focus on the numerators to put them in order from least to greatest. We have an 8, a 9, a 2, and a 5. Clearly 2 is smaller than all four of these, therefore 1 sixth is the smaller fraction. After that 2, we have the 5 over the 12. Obviously 5 is the smaller numerator, which came from the fraction 5 twelfths. Next, we have an 8 and a 9. Well, obviously 8 is the smaller of the 2, which came from the fraction 2 thirds. Leaving the last numerator, a 9, which came from the fraction 3 fourths. Therefore, if I was asked to put these in order from least to greatest, this would be my order. 